good old Mercator projection. Uh, look at this nice arc map, base map that I added in, and of course it comes in as Web Mercator, and we can see a lot of display issues in making a map when we see these Web Mercator projections. First of all, look how huge Antarctica is. Antarctica is not that size, and Greenland's not that size. Again, Mercator projections are not appropriate projections to use for a world map, and it's not an appropriate projection to use for almost any of your maps, and you should always think about applying a display projection. So for example, if I was making a map of the United States of America, this is something that I have to uh, that I critique people a lot on their maps is that uh, they use the Mercator projection on their map, and you can see here Mexico is very small, right, and Canada is very huge. And the Mercator projection is not good at all. And you can tell this just by the fact that Mexico here is about the same size as Greenland. So there's definitely area distortions happening with Mercator projection. So the way we're going to prevent that from happening in our maps is that we're going to use a display projection that's appropriate to the geographic area that we're trying to represent. So for example, if we're dealing with the United States of America, the lower 48, we're excluding Alaska and uh, Hawaii, we're going to want to use a projection here that's going to represent this part of the US the best. And the way we're going to find that projection is by we're going to go into our data frame properties. So if I see here where the word says layers, that's the name of my data frame. If I right click on that and go to properties, I bring up my data frame properties. You can also go here to view and view the data frame properties. Once you're in data frame properties, you want to go to the coordinate system. So the way the coordinate system tab works, or the way display projections work, is that your geographic data can be in any projection at once. And then there's the display projection, where the computer will automatically redisplay the projection to whatever projection you want. So our base maps are all natively in WGS84 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. And so whenever we add them in, uh, whatever one you add in first, the display projection is going to be set or your current coordinate system is going to be set to that one. And we can see that if we go here to layers, we can see that we have WGS84 being applied to our base map. So what we want to do is not use a display that world projection. We're going to want to use a projection that's appropriate for the United States. So if I go and scroll up here, you can see that under my projections, I have two different types, geographic coordinate systems or projected coordinate systems. Geographic coordinate systems are simply unprojected coordinate systems, or in other words, they can be just your long lag grids. Um, this is where if you want to just have a longitude latitude grid, this is not an appropriate way to make a map. Uh, you're going to want to use a projected coordinate system. So here's projected coordinate systems, and in here you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different folders, uh, including continental, national grid, state plane, UTM. If you're working on a very local level, UTM is going to be very good. Um, if you're working in the United States on a local level, state plane will be good. But since we want the continental United States, we're going to choose um, continental, and then we're going to choose our continent, which is North America. And in here, you'll see all the different projections. So we can see here NAD83 projections, NAD27 projections. Those are just the, the datums that are being used in the projection. And you can also see here, for example, Hawaii. That's an interesting one, Alaska. That will help you in your in your maps that you make. Uh, but we're going to scroll down, and we want to use. Uh, normally, you're going to want to use a map that's going to preserve area at this scale. Um, that's probably the most important thing. And you can see here, like U.S. National Atlas has their equal area projection that they have. You also have here Albers Equal Area Conic, and one that's developed by the USGS. That's really good. Um, normally, I tell students to work with equal area. If something's very important that you're measuring distance, then you want to use equidistance. Um, if you're comparing visually different parts of the United States, you want to use equal area not to add any geographic size bias to your visual analysis. And then also a Lambert conformal conic will be a pretty good uh, one that preserves area and equidistance, kind of like a two-way, uh, kind of the best of both worlds uh, kind of thing. But Normally you want to stick with the equal area, so I'm going to use the U.S. National Atlas. And when I hit OK, you're going to see this projection, just I'm going to move this to the side. You see how the United States is really kind of like top heavy here and really skinny at the bottom? If we hit Apply, you're going to see that this is going to be reprojected on the fly using the uh, projection on the fly engine of ArcMap. When I hit Apply, you'll see that 
ArcMap will redraw this as skinnier. You're going to get this warning telling you that you are using the project on the fly. Uh, and they're saying that the coordinate systems are different from what you're originally using um, and that you ha are using a transformation. And if you go here, you can explore the different types of transformations that are being used. Uh, but normally, the default transformation is a pretty good one. Um, this would only really matter if you're doing high precision measuring. Um, so we're not going to be worried about that. And we're just going to say, do you wish to continue? We're going to just say yes. So when I hit yes, you're going to see now the United States is going to redraw. And I want you to remember that image with the United States being fat on top. It's going to redraw, and you're going to see the United States actually having a better projection that you can use to compare it. And you can see now it looks more like you're looking at a globe, right? So this is less distorted, and you can see that the United States now has lost some weight up at the top, and the bottom is back to normal size. So uh, then I can, of course, zoom in on this uh, for my final map layout. You can decide exactly how you want it. what extent that you want, but this is going to be a lot better looking United States map than the original one that you saw. So just be sure to always use the proper display projection. If I was working with a different area, like maybe the state of Texas, I want to use a state system. Te the state of Texas has made its own projection. If I'm working with Mexico or Canada or with Africa or with uh, Asia, I want to go and explore and find out what those official uh, projection systems are for those places normally those are going to be the best best ones that distort the least and then of course you can find them all presetted here in ArcMap under the data frame properties and you'll just explore here for your projection